Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I'm back on the test server here. Thank you, Raid, for giving us access to the test server. It does mean that we can test a whole bunch of stuff before it goes live in the game, and we recommend whether you should be pushing your resources into it or not. So, what's going on? We have got the bunny, as well as some of the other new champions, which I've just done a video on, um, which you should go and check out as well, by the way, at the end of this one. I'll link it at the end. But there's a bunch of new champions, including. An epic you will need four copies of to complete this this legendary fusion who looks kind of half decent if you can't afford to get the legendary looks kind of decent there's also a bunch of other sylvan watchers joining the game as well so is it going to be worth our time and effort to get ourselves a razelvarg um looking a little bit worse for wear honestly the easter bunny's had a hard year this year but also looking pretty damn sweet Got himself, what's that, like a wolf on his back? This bunny's taking down the wall, the walks or whatever. Got himself a little paw as well. So he's been doing some work. Been taking them down. King of the bunnies. Looks cool, right? Looks cool. Okay. We do like a skinwalker. Honestly, I think when skinwalkers come out, they're the most hyped type of visual champions in the game. I like it. So attack based. He's got 110 base speed which is really high for an attack type of champion 1520 base attack as well which is really high as well okay base defense okay base hp um let's take a look at the kit so he's got a triple hit a1 this is going to be good for finite until you get to crazy finite um each hit will fill his turn meter as well only by five percent but that's quite a lot when you start to get to obscene speeds that this dude can do so pretty interesting all of his damage is based on his attack and his speed. So his passive boosting his speed, which we'll get to in a minute, will boost his, his damage over time as well. Generally, the first multiplier is the one that's more effective for damage. And then the second one is like an, a little uh, like Brucey bonus, a little bit extra. There's only, I think, maybe three champions in the game that have got any sort of multiplier that boosts with speed and uh, we haven't really seen one that, that massively affects it. So it'd be interesting to see what Razelvarg does here on these. He does have two AoE smacks. We're going to be testing that damage real soon. Uh, the first one here is an AoE hit that applies Leech. Goes to 100% chance to apply. Three turn cooldown. Um, and heals this champion by 10% for each Leech he puts out there. So it could be a straight 40% heal against Hydra. Um, or against wave based content it's a really big heal because he's got two aoe's as well you know throwing him in control sets like stun sets are going to be pretty damn effective if you're like a mid-game account or if you're trying to get through faction wars and you need a bit more control you know he's going to be quick he's going to be cycling around those hits really fast both of them on three turn cooldowns as well so he's going to be doing aoe hits a lot so any sort of stun set is going to be useful if you're trying to control enemies you know, like Doom Tower waves, faction wars, just general um, dungeon waves as well. It's going to be decent. The A3 here gives you an increased speed buff and 50% increased accuracy. So again, if you're a mid-game player trying to burst your way through those dungeons or Hydra or whatever, increased accuracy massively reduces the amount of accuracy you're going to need on your team. And he's going to be cycling through this still really quick. So I'd imagine for most of your team, they're going to have increased accuracy up all the time. I would think so. Because he's going to be way quicker than most of your team with his passive. So yeah, he's going to be kind of getting his turns more often. Goes out there for two turns, but it's on a three turn cooldown. So it's not bad. So when he places his increased speed, he starts to get this speed buff on his passive. It's only him. Yeah. Uh, when it says, like I was uh, speculating about where it says increases their speed. It's actually just Razelvarg's speed that changes. But every time he places increased speed on anyone on your team, he gets an extra five speed. Stacks up to 100. And it gives you a, a mammoth amount of speed, honestly. So if you imagine you get to 100 speed, if you're playing on Hydra, there's six people in your squad. That means every time he places increased speed, he gains 30 speed. It's kind of nuts until he gets up to 100 more. He's going to be pushing really high speeds because also increased speed buff works on your total speed number so this 30 percent gain is also going to be stacking on top of this 100 
You're basically getting 130 speed out of this. So yeah, it becomes pretty obscene, honestly, the amount of speed you could get out of this guy. He's got speed in all battles as well. So the main things I'm going to be testing here is like, how much do these two hit for? Are these big hits? And you know, where do I think we're going to be using him? Honestly, I feel like Fire Knight, Hydra are going to be like the two standout areas for him. And then really, because he's bringing Leech, because he's bringing increased speed and accuracy, for a mid-game account, that just helps you absolutely everywhere in the game. Absolutely everywhere. But he doesn't become the master of anywhere, in my opinion. Like, I, don't, I don't see him as the master of anywhere in the game, unless these are two absolute cannons. But even if they are, like the, the meta is not to just hit hard. The meta is to hit hard whilst ignoring defense, whilst doing a whole bunch of other stuff, whilst blocking revive. Like, so if he's just hitting hard, he's cool. But it doesn't mean that he's going to be suddenly top tier arena, all that type of stuff. He'll just be good. So anyway, let's get him in some sort of disgusting build first and throw some damage on him and see what he can do. Okay, you know what's coming next. We've got Razel Varg in Savage and Cruel Gear. We're going maximum damage. Uh, we have got 6.8k attack, 271% crit damage with 183 speed. Enough accuracy to land his stuff. We've gone for Helm Smasher. I have pushed for you know, things which improve my speed as well just along the way. That We'll use those in other kind of parts of the video. We've gone for a damage build just to see, can he hit? Is he going to be worth our time just for damage uh let's get him into a kind of normal damage comp so we have lydia for the drop defense and weaken arbiter to boost our attack we're gonna have ourselves bad l and gurp tuck in the mix and then arazavard comes in we've got speed in all battles may as well put that on it's going to give us a bit of a damage boost from his second part of his kind of damage multiplier and we're going against neutral affinity on stage 20 dragon this is where i normally do my test for a bit of damage let's do it turn me to boost increase attack drop defense and weaken on the enemy poison us poison them as well getting both gurp tucks and bad l's buffs up and then we've got increased speed as well, which is going to give us a bit more of a damage boost. Let's see what the A1's going to do. See what the animation looks like as well. Apothecary, you're taking it on the chin, my friend. Got a bit of a slice. What's that? Like 90k per hit. So that's going to be a, a what? 270k, 260, 270k A1. It's good. It's not insane damage, but it's actually not bad. Okay, then let's see what's going on with the AoE hits. This is really what I want to know about. So the A2, which applies Leech as well and gives him a fat heal, could mean that he's capable. If he cycles it quick enough, he could be capable of actually doing solo stuff here. We might try that in this video as well. So A2, placing Leech, does it hit 250k roughly, 220 to 250. It's pretty, again, pretty high damage, but it's, it's not up there with the big boys in the game, honestly. It's good. Not crazy. So one last skill to go then. It's going to be his A3. This is going to give us increased accuracy, increased speed as it happens. Slow this down. What have we got? It's a bit better. 250 to 300 roughly. It's up there as a, a decent smack. Yeah. Both AoEs, decent smacks. But we're going to be using him for his utility more than just sheer power. Just to give you a bit of context here. Void Legendary Ethos, known for his damage... I tried to get into a similar style of build. It's not quite the same, but just if you want to see what a similar type of build looks like on a Void Legendary known for hitting. Yeah, an Ethos A2, A which is his weaker of the hits, is like 70k per hit three times. So that's a 210k on the A2. So actually, I mean, not far off, to be fair. Not far off what we've just seen there from Razelvald. With his hits. So yeah, maybe maybe he's up there probably a little bit in that kind of like next tier down from the real top tier champs. The A3 here from an ethos is again like 250 odd K. So Razavarg's actually a similar level of hitting to an ethos. Both of them have got two AoE hits, but Razavarg brings a ton more utility. Okay, this might be pointless, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So I've gone for a solo build in Toxic Set to get his damage. And I'm basically pushing 
the ability to just cycle stuff really quick here. Yeah? So all of the masteries now are set up to just cycle things quickly. Now I've been thinking about it. It's probably a pointless thing to do, but it'd be fun to try it anyway. Let's just go on to stage 20. And we're going to throw him in with a bunch of food. Now, obviously, when food dies, he gets quicker through his masteries. But also, when he gives people a speed buff, he gets quicker through his passive. So, it, as I say, it might be a completely pointless thing to do. But um, for that mid-game player looking to see if they could get a solo champ, is he going to be an option? We'll see, I guess. He is going to be able to self-heal on his A2, but it's only his A2. Which is why I'm not sure if it's going to be possible for like higher level stuff. Because obviously, we want him to cycle through skills as quick as possible. Got the increased speed away there. So he's gained, before anybody's, um, before he's on his own, he's gained, what, five stacks of increased speed. So he's going to have gained like 25 extra speed. And he does hit kind of hard. And obviously, poison's doing work as well. Do we need the poison versus just building him to hit hard? I'm not sure, but... Obviously, with solo stuff, you have to be pretty tanky. You have to have high resistance, all that type of stuff. So he's already tanking up a lot of damage. But look at that massive heal that he's just done there. A 40% heal came off. He's back to full. So he's going to get to wave two in a decent time, a minute. It is only stage 20. Don't forget. But some people like to farm stage 20, you know, if you're kind of like, I guess, mid towards end game. I don't know. What are we saying? Is it viable? Is it something that we even, we even care about? Or is he just going to be dead? Oh, he's actually close to being dead. Need his heal. There it is, though. I think it's kind of viable. Will he deal with the dragon? I'm not sure. Doesn't have enough poison in his kit to just kind of like throw poison out there all the time. But damn, his self-healing is pretty nuts. If nothing else, even if this is not for you a viable strat, which I, I get if you don't think it is, it does give you a bit of a showcase of his self-healing, which we're going to be able to use anywhere in the game. So, you know, if you're using him in Doom Tower, Hydra, whatever, you don't really need to be bringing him in any sort of healing set because he just cycles back through his ability so quick and he just heals himself. Now, you think about it now, he's probably gained close to the 100 speed now. So he's actually running at something like 330. Plus, he's doing increased speed on himself, which gives him another 30% of that speed. So his speed is kind of off the chart right now, considering he's just in toxic gear. And this is going to end up being a pretty... I think we do it. I think it's going to end up being a pretty decent time, honestly, for a solo run. So, you know, whether you think this is viable or not, whether you want to farm 20 or not, there's a whole bunch of questions that perhaps we're not answering there. But I think it's going to end up being under four minutes as a solo Dragon 20 farm whilst you're, you know, building out your food and stuff, providing he can keep himself healed up. Is he even using his A2 here? Leeches on there, he must be. I'm not seeing the crazy heals. But anyway, pretty comfortable. There's not really much going on. And I deliberately didn't put like insane gear on him. So, don't know, guys. What are you saying? Comment below. Have I just wasted, you know, three minutes, 30 towards four minutes of your time? Or are you actually saying, you know what? Viable. I like it. This dragon is dead. Kind of cool. <laughs> kind of cool i'll run it again on a high level and just see what it does i won't make you watch the whole thing but three minutes 36 dragon 20 clear um dragon 24 is going to be his affinity to the master it so i guess i'll run it here and i'll let you know if he dies or not now we died really fast uh, that particular way puts out like block damage and block debuffs and stuff so just really annoying but anyway just as a sideline he can farm dragon 20 pretty much solo um, let's rebuild him now into a build that I think most people would get most value out of. Okay, so this is how I feel like most people are going to run him, you know, if they're running through their mid-game kind of accounts. A stun set with some extra speed, trying to keep him fast, trying to make sure he's still got 100% crit rate. Um, but the crit rate's less important in a stun set because obviously 
The main thing is you're just cycling through your turns, getting your AoEs away as quick as you can. I'd see him being played, if you're not playing him Hydra, which we're going to do towards the end, I think his best role is going to be Finite. Not Finite hard, I don't think he's, he's strong enough to deal with that, but you know, if you're trying to punch your way up towards higher levels Finite, I guess we could go for um, a high level like Finite 25 and try like a non-seer type of team. So I'm thinking a team like this, basically he's our only control in the team. If he's not landing stuns everywhere, then we will lose the run. That's pretty much where we're at. Is he good enough to do that in a stun set, which is quite quick? I guess we'll find out. I think he might be. And then everyone else really is just kind of in there to, to just do some work. You know, so the AOE hits, we, didn't, we landed one stun that time. It's kind of needing a bit more than that. Two, should cycle around again i think but we're not gonna land an aoe so we take one hit if you take more than one or two hits against this type of wave on stage 25 you are dead that's literally where it's at but you can see we've got four people locked down with stuns and gives us enough kind of work with the leech as well everyone else is kind of healing up for that little bit of damage we did take and we're gonna rotate round pretty well to do first wave quite quick everyone's in decent builds here but no one's in like crazy builds stun now on nephro this time that's better and this is the value of a stun set basically at, at high-end play it just enables you to let the rest of your team get some work done you could also absolutely like run another control champion if you had like Scylla the drakes alongside this then you've got way more kind of like guarantee around your stunnage. You know, one more champion just doing work like this would really help. But um, I think we get through the wave. It might not be 100% clean. It's, it's not bad. But the triple hit with his A1 will help us on the boss to get that, that shield down for sure. And then it's just about him placing things like Leech to heal us back up. You know, he's, he's not, he's given us increased accuracy. He's given us increased speed for the boss. He's not the boss killer in the team. And that's probably for me, his biggest downfall is he doesn't really have a, you know, I'm, I'm this boss killer. He doesn't have anything in his kit, which says which boss he should be taking down. He's just got kind of like a bouncy, funky speed type of hits going on. He will be now a hundred speed more than he was. Like he's given us increased speed enough times. So we will be getting his A1 away a lot. He's getting his own turn meter boost from doing that. And I do have him now with Warmaster. Maybe Warmaster right here probably is still right. But yeah, obviously from here we've got Armager doing turn meter drop. We've got uh, the Coldheart doing turn meter drop. Between them two, it should be a decent amount. And for stage 25, we're going to end up doing this in under three minutes which is pretty decent, I would say, with the type of squad that we've got here. Especially considering there's like no OP kind of ways of getting through waves going on. Shame that finite. Obviously, everyone's moving super fast as well. So I don't think, I'm not trying to make this video to say this guy's OP. I think he's not. I think he's decent. But there you go, three minute time of finite. Everybody's built well. Yeah, my teams are built well here, but they're not built crazy. So three minutes, finite 25. I think that's pretty decent. The same build, I would suggest, is a decent one for Doom Tower waves, Faction War waves, all of that type of stuff. That same stun set build is going to be just generally a good go-to if you're not sure what to do with him. Okay, we're going to go for a Hydra build now. And I've deliberately gone like quite high spec build here. Why not? So we're throwing him in perception with relentless gear. I can see him being pretty OP with relentless in Hydra, especially giving him that self-heal type of mechanic. I maybe built one bit squishy here, so it might be that you'd need to go higher HP than this, but I just figured let's let him loose. 100% crit rate, 4.9k attack, basically 5k attack, 222 crit damage, fast, 276 with good accuracy, and I've gone War Master as the main mastery. We're going to try and cycle around his skills really quick. Okay, so I'm throwing him into a brutal team in this setup. I've got Mithrala kind of like shielding, protecting, buffing, risk, provoking, and um, keeping decreased speed on the enemy potentially. 
Cantra keeping the provoke up. More damage from Tumisia, damage from the, the bunny rabbit, and then Udo with our block buff ability and some healing. Bit of cleansing as well. Let's see how this runs. I th I'm just feeling like with Relentless Gear on, you've got a chance to cycle through your skills really quick. He is quite squishy in this build that I've done. Things like heal reduction are not going to help, but we can get a bit of cleansing going off. So uh, I guess let's see how we get on. Cantra should keep Provoke up for most of the fight, unless we get unlucky. We don't got like 75% chance to do it, but the amount of times we're going to be cycling through our abilities compared to them should mean that we get some good damage away. I'm going to let it play through. Let's see how he performs at this kind of pretty high level Hydra, which I think is his best place in the game. And uh, yeah, see how it goes.
Well, damn. <laughs> this team's ended up doing probably about three times, if not more, the damage I was expecting from it. So I know some people are going to be there like, oh, yeah, but it's an OP team, whatever. Hydra, it's all about the team. Yeah, so you have to have a, a really good balance to your team, especially if you're going for higher levels like Brutal and uh, Nightmare. But yeah, what I'm interested to see at the end here is how much damage did our Bunny Rabbit bring? Because that's the main test here. You know, who's doing the work? And I kind of see here lowest to highest. Let's just move me for a second. Tantra brought 3 million damage, but obviously was doing the Provoke. Chris bought nearly 6 mil. Ugo, 4 mil. Mithrala with her poisoning did 13 mil. Um, we then had Razzlevarg with 28.6 million damage, plus a ton of healing. Don't know how many times you saw him there, just heal up to full. Pretty nuts. Timicia with all her burns and hits, 31 mil damage. So yeah, as I thought, Razzlevarg is damn good for Hydra. Like, he's going to be really, really solid for Hydra. I Honestly, it might be too much, but I wish he just bought one more thing. Like, one more thing to the party, whether it was... You know, another debuff alongside that leech, decrease attack, decrease defense, block debuffs, like just one more thing. And I'd be like, you absolutely cannot miss this champion. As he is right now, I think he's good. I think he's solid. Uh, even for an endgame account like mine, he's he could add definitely some spice into a Hydra team. But because he doesn't quite bring enough, for the rest of the squad. He's very selfish. He brings loads to himself. Doesn't bring really enough to the rest of the squad. It's hard to say he should go in there. Because really he's only going in there as a damage dealer. He's bringing Leech I guess which is okay. But he's only really going in there as a damage dealer. And the argument would be well if I just had a Royal Guard in that spot. Or you know a Husk or whoever. Someone else bringing damage. I probably would have done exactly the same amount of damage. With that champion. And it's, I think it's a quite a fair argument. But there you go, guys. Razzlevarg, probably overall a bit better than I originally thought it was going to be over the whole scope of this video. Good base damage, good utility and stuff like a stun set. Great in Hydra, but I think he will remain a kind of mid-game, mid-tier legendary compared to others that just bring a bit more in their kit for the whole team. I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you later.